use any navigation application to go through traffic jams? What happens when you scroll down through your social media feed? Do you follow any recommendation that any streaming service might give you? So by the end of the day, we know that AI is there, but do we actually understand what is going on? And can we trust the output of those applications? To date, the approach that we've taken to these kinds of technologies is to say, well, consumers can figure this out on their own. They can read the terms and conditions on websites. They can choose not to participate in certain digital environments. But increasingly, these products and platforms are part of our lives. They are part of the way that we provide education. They are part of the way that we look for jobs. And that power imbalance cannot be addressed by simply giving consumers more information or giving them individual rights of complaint. What we're ultimately going to have to do if we're going to change the kind of structural ways in which these technologies are designed is to push the responsibilities back on our designers, back on the organisations who are relying on technologies to change their practices. Technologies like artificial intelligence have the potential to empower people and to broaden their perspectives. Or they can widen inequalities and really don't contribute to address our societal challenges. But we cannot blame the technologies. It's not about the technologies. It's about us developing the framework, shaping the rules that will allow these technologies to deliver to what we want them to achieve. And we need to make sure that we embed those very important ethical principles, the protection and promotion of human rights and human dignity, that would at the end determine the outcomes. Responsible governance of AI technologies without the buy-in of big tech and other companies is impossible. It is necessary for us to find ways in which to explain to them that ethics is not about abstract principles. Ethics should be bottom up, it is a dynamic system, it should enable innovation and in the end lead to trust in products of these companies, which would lead to success in terms of whatever their business aims are. We see how ethical debates end up playing an important role in shaping the conversation of AI regulation. Over the last five years, we saw a plethora of charters, declaration of AI ethical principles. We are seeing right now that those principles are being uh, applied on a very practical basis. A lot of countries in Latin America have already come up with their national strategies on artificial intelligence, but some countries in the region are going a step further. They are actually regulating through hard law some of the principles of artificial intelligence. In the European Union, we're looking at draft AI acts. In the US, Congress is starting to talk in great detail about monopoly power of technology companies. And you can see the wheels turning uh, across the world as countries move from awareness raising to strategy to attempts at implementation, attempts at regulation. lack of accessibility to these technologies by definition would exclude one from the debate on responsible governance because in effect the decisions that are generated in such a process would just not apply to a person who was not part of the data set. So in fact you are deleted, you don't exist. What is linked to this as well is the issue that previously colonized countries are excluded from conversations around what responsible governance would be, and this just exacerbates the problem. So there is a first step that needs to be taken, which is to understand 
which groups are excluded from this conversation. Because when we talk about regulation of AI, we're talking about privacy, we're talking about that protection, we're talking about freedom of expression, we're talking about very basic human rights. What makes the difference is to have sound regulatory frameworks that will protect privacy, that will enhance transparency, that will really deliver on accountability. But this is something we need to shape. It needs to be through a process where we listen to everybody. And I feel that this is the only way we can deliver strong bases for the technologies to deliver to our human goals. The great risk at this point in time is that artificial intelligence becomes a arms race in which each country only focus on its own context and see the other countries as competitors. AI might build bridges and connect people and countries, but at the same time could be the other way around. This is the debate that you should care about because that's the debate that is shaping up our future with technology.